All right, guys, I don't know if you guys can see anything, but we're all loaded up. Headed to Florida. We got Dooley in the back. We got a fat box. Say hello, Nulas. <laughs> Say hey, Dooley. Jerk. Fleet is here. Hey. I'm here. We've got a uh, four and a half hour drive. <laughs> and uh, I hope I don't regret bringing both dogs. <laughs> later. Trailer, hauling a trailer, hauling a car. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I scared you? You scared me. All right, guys, so we are on our way to Marietta, Georgia to pick up a new 40 foot trailer because. I got in a fight with a few super truckers on the channel. Uh, there was the same guy that just kept going through all my videos, talking shit. Oh, you think that's a wide load? You need to go home and cry to your mommy. Jonathan Williams is his name. And if I find him, <laughs> good luck, buddy. But, uh, so he basically contacted DOT 
let DOT know what we did to the trailer. DOT's been at our house for the last three days. Um, basically gave us the same audit as if we murdered somebody on the, on the highway. Um, audit went great. We passed with uh, the highest score you can pass. But he's telling me unless I can get Big Tex to sign off on the trailer, we can no longer use it for commercial use. Uh, there's a section in the FMCSA handbook that says, man, I keep thinking I'm pulling a trailer and I need all kinds of room in front of the trucks. Basically says you can't alter a commercial vehicle uh, unless done to the manufacturer's specs. Since we extended the frame, we've I've got big techs watching my YouTube videos um, to see if they would be okay with how I did it. Um, they're probably not going to be okay. The way the guy explained it to me was, uh, if they approve it, then they'll be liable if something happens. It doesn't make any sense. So I can build that trailer and I can drive it up and down these interstates all day, every day no problems for myself. As soon as you get the government involved, it's a big no-no. Now, you would think a commercial vehicle, since we have to have more insurance than your average homeowner, that it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But, I guess it is. But, uh, so he, he put us through the ringer. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork that a lot of you hot shotters have no idea that you actually need. Nope. Not a clue. We watched a lot of people's videos. I'm not going to call them out. But basically, all the paperwork that you need is on the FMCSA's website, and it's hard as hell to find. It's in a super <clears throat> hidden spot. He had to show Lita two times, two or three times, where to find the paperwork, didn't he? Well... It's because it tells you to upload certain documents, but when they come down and see you, you need more than that. You need everything. So right. if you don't have backup proof of your ELD, better go get it. If you don't have maintenance record for the month, what you changed, better yeah. go get it. Yeah, so there's a form that you uh, print out on the FMCSA website for maintenance on your truck. And maintenance... He explained to me is anything from changing the oil it's to everything. changing the light bulb. Everything you uh, do. He's like, I noticed you had a new bearing cap on your trailer. He said, I don't see that on your maintenance thing. They want to know absolutely everything. If you get in an accident and you hurt or kill somebody, that lawyer is going to want to see a maintenance record of your trailer. And if he doesn't see that we put a new cap on there, he's like, that lawyer could push to say that there was something wrong with that axle which caused the accident, yada, yada, so on and so forth. So, um, I don't know. There's things like you need, to, your company, even if you're an owner-operator, you need to have a safe driving certificate. Basically, you have to go online and print out a certificate. That off says, their website. Off, off their, their website, website. That says the company rode with you even if you're the owner operator, you still have to fill this out. The company rode with you and that and that you're a safe driver. Let's see, what else what else were, were we missing? Uh, an application, so you have to do an application on yourself. You, you have, basically have to apply for your own company. You have to use their application. And you, you cannot yeah, we print. had some cheap application printed off. Yeah, you, you have to use their application. Yeah, they have an application that you have to fill out and print off on off the FMCSA site because they will not take just some random application that you printed off on a blank application site because that's what we did. Yeah. Um, and then you have to pull three years of their driving record and it has to be certified. So you can't just pull it up on the app and be like, look, he's good. You have to pay for the certified one. 
that's like six dollars for Georgia. I don't know how much it is for the other states. And you also have to contact the company that the driver drove for previously. Yes. And they have to give you the safety, the their driving yeah, record. Yes. So if you've ever had a driving job, even if it's delivering for Domino's, you have to have the driving record from the person before. Who employed you before, and yeah. they have to give it to you. So you, if you left on bad terms, you still have to get it. We told them that. You know, we weren't sure if that was going to be able to be gotten, and he said, "Well, they have to give it to you, so you have to get it." Yeah. So when the guy called in and made this complaint, <clears throat> the head DOT guy, the one that showed up, didn't even know that you could do this too to a commercial vehicle. He said his secretary actually spent like three days digging through paperwork trying to find this. I swear to God, this dash camera. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna JB weld this thing up here. Uh, Not sure how to help with that. Yeah, I didn't ask you anything. So, uh, <laughs> you know how to help with that. Just blew it for me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he said if somebody would have never made the complaint, I would have never, it would have, it would have never been brought up. Um, the only thing, thought about using the trailer, but the only thing now is now when a DOT officer pulls us over for an inspection like happens every week, he would see on there that we had a safety audit and that the, the officer found that the frame had been modified and then he he put in the section of the FMCSA. And if I remember and if I can find it, I'll, I'll go ahead and post a link to to it. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what we're dealing with. Now, normally, I would say, screw it, let's run it. But we have a contract coming up for 36 wide loads in Colorado. Now, if it wasn't for the 36 wide loads in Colorado, I would just be like, screw it, let's chance it. So he said that they, they wouldn't shut me down. They can't put me out of service for what's done to the trailer, but they can fine me up to $10,000 depending on the state and depending on how the DOT officer feels. So, I didn't want to get out to Colorado because you know when you do a wide load, when you go through a way station, you have to stop at every way station, you have to bring in your paperwork, and it can be a complete pain in the butt. I hope this audio is picking up okay since it's so close to the windshield and the road noise. But yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm uh, that's what we've uh, been dealing with. Uh, today is the Friday of the week after Thanksgiving. You can't even weld your own ratchet rail on your trailer unless it's approved by the manufacturer. Anything you do to your trailer that's permanent cannot be done unless it's approved by the manufacturer. Now you can bolt like a toolbox or something to it because it's not permanent. permanent. But even things like the ratchet rail system is permanent since it's welded. Uh, now, obviously, a DOT officer pulling you over. I mean, the ratchet rail systems are on a million trailers. They're probably not going to give you... Uh, they're not even going to think twice about it. But if a DOT officer wants to be an asshole, or a, he's probably not even a subscriber. He's just some super trucker on here. He probably doesn't even drive a truck. He probably sits at home in his mom's basement his finger in his ass but basically if, if you weld if you show yourself welding on your own trailer and you don't have the original company's approval then you can get in trouble for that so anyways I've been looking and looking and looking for trailers I can't seem to find one the whole reason we cut up the trailers because there was like a three month wait on it on on getting a 40 footer I found a used 40 footer in Marietta, Georgia. It's a Southern Trailer LLC uh, trailer. 
Same one Rocket Ship uses. Uh, Rocket Ship, he has a uh, YouTube channel as well. He hasn't posted in a while. I don't know what's going on with him. But uh, same trailer. I think this one has a little bit of a dovetail where his doesn't have a dovetail. His might be a straight duck. I don't know. But the trailer's rated at 12,000. I've already called the trailer company. They're gonna make me a new a new um, plate for it. It says 16,000. I guess the guy before used it with a dually or something. They're gonna re-rate it for 16,000. I got another YouTube subscriber. He bought something in Albany, Georgia. He wants me to bring to Wisconsin. So, as soon as we pick up the trailer, I'm also waiting on snow chains uh, uh, for the truck because we need that to go out to Colorado. And I'm waiting on uh, some amber lights because the wide loads are 14 feet wide. So, I'm waiting on lights. From what I can see, is you out in Colorado, if it's less than 15 feet, you either need lights or pilot cars. So, obviously, the lights are going to be the cheaper deal. As it comes closer to, which I'm probably going to be leaving out next week for those wide loads. Uh, they're paying $3,400. I, I bid them at $3,400 for, it's like 600 miles, and they approved it. And that was back when we were stuck out west. I called on this months ago, and me and the broker's been talking back and forth. So that's that's awesome. I um, also want to give Duke Daddy a shout out. Uh, he's a subscriber on the channel too. Um, he offered to let me use his trailer until I found one. Uh, that's that's super awesome of him to uh, to do something like that for me. Um, since all of this is going on, but we just want to give you guys a heads up of what's going on. And maybe we'll do a better broke down video of what DOT expects from you. Now, like we said, this is an audit that they did at our house. And when they come to your house, they're more strict. Um, as, as they're more strict than what you would do like through emails with them. But you still got to have that. You have to have but all But you still stuff. have to have all this. So it basically, your first safety audit is kind of like showing you what to expect and they kind of walk you through and kind of help you out look this is what you actually need now that's good unless you've been in a, a commercial accident and then that 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 niceness goes away and they expect you even if you never had your first safety audit of them showing you how the how the, the right way to do it is uh, they're gonna rip you apart so it's better to have your paperwork ahead of time than, uh, than to be in an accident or something and them show up at your door and be like, all right, we need to see your logs. So uh, that's pretty much what's going on. We've got uh, three hours and 15 minutes to get to look at this trailer. Um, it's a 2018 Southern. Um, he's asking 10000 for it. It comes with all the... All the uh, straps and chains and stuff like that. I'm not really worried about that. And he bought a set of aftermarket 10, uh, 10 foot aluminum ramps. I talked him down to 10 to 9,000. I'm hoping I can get him to 8,000. So I'm really not wanting to spend this much money on a, on a used trailer. It's got the 8,000 pound oil bath axles, which I'm kind of nervous about too, because uh, I keep, I keep hearing a lot that, uh, if they fail, parts are impossible to find. Which I'll be honest with you, when our when our leaf springs failed, we couldn't find parts for that. No, nope. so it's not. So I, I don't think it would be any any better or worse. I don't know. Of course, it was like five when we found out that something was wrong with. I the guess. Trailer. Yeah, I guess it was kind of late in the day. But um, I don't know. This is the option that we're left with. Yeah. So. If it wasn't for these wide loads coming up, then. Uh, I'd probably just take a chance with that other trailer. But since I know I'm gonna be going through a way station, multiple way stations at least 36 times, then uh, I was like, I should probably at least go get a, a, a trailer that's not gonna be uh, an issue. An issue. <laughs> so, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the original trailer. Uh, I always talked about if, 
if I got out of hot shotting, what I would do is I would put a camper on the front of the trailer and then I would just put the race car on the back. That way when we go to a track or go out of town for race, we would have somewhere to stay other than a hotel room and it would be cheaper. Yeah. And so it, that's that's still an option. It gets hot at the track too. Yeah, so. it gets it gets hot at the track. So it's nice to have somewhere you can go in and cool off. Take a nap. Take a nap. Um, haven't decided on that. We still owe six thousand dollars on that trailer. We're paying at least nine thousand for this one. So that's a real kick in the nuts. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what's going on. I'll keep you guys updated when we go look at the trailer. We may get it, we may not get it. You know, the guy said he bought it and he used it two or three times, and that's it. I may get up there, and that may be a lie. So who knows? We'll see. I'll know from telling from the condition of his straps and stuff if we actually used it. Yeah, I mean, you could have bought new, new straps. You can look. You can look at the trailer and tell if it's been used a lot. I'll be able to look at the tires. It's supposed to come with, uh, like I said, 8,000 pound axles, 14 ply tires. Um, he said the 10 foot aluminum ramps were $1,000. Yeah. By themselves. That's probably right. I don't Which, know. it comes with the little ramps. They're not mega ramps, but they come with the fold out ramps that don't take up the whole back of the deck. So I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue. The aluminum ramps will be nice when we go to road, load the Mustang up on the uh, car trailer, on the, on the trailer. Probably gonna sell my car trailer now that I have two gooseneck trailers. You don't have any room for yeah. any more trailers. So, anyways, we're babbling. Uh, we'll see you guys later. <sighs> All right, guys, we are in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, here, looking at the trailer. Uh, like I said, he wanted ten thousand for it. I've, I've talked him down to eighty-eight hundred. Comes with fourteen ply tires. Um, it comes with these aluminum ramps. Not sure how much I'll use those, honestly. Um, he's he's got to back his truck under here because my truck sits up higher than his, and it's already the legs are already maxed out. So he's gonna back up under here and then jack them up and then readjust it so I can get back under it. All right, guys. It is uh, now the next morning. I'm uh, going through all the toolboxes, trying to figure out how we're going to set this up. Just kind of want to give you guys my uh, first thoughts on uh, on this. Those are those aluminum ramps that came with, by the way. Um, they're 10 feet long. This is the uh, part number and all on them. Rated for 5,000 pounds a piece. And he had a trailer place put these on. And then the ramp slides in there and then he chained them up with the chain. But anyways, uh, so it's a 2018 model. Um, and just looking over it, I mean, stepping back, it seems like everything's cool with this trailer. Um, I do like that they've got a few more marker lights than what Big Tex puts on. And this light right here actually flashes with your turn signal. So uh, that's pretty sweet. But just looking at the build quality of this thing, now this was built back in uh, 2018 like I said I'm not really sure how long this guy's been building trailers but I got a lot of people that gave me shit about my welds on my trailer but <clears throat> I just want you guys to look at this right here let me see if I can climb up in the back of my truck <laughs> right here this is uh I don't know I feel like if you built if you build trailers for a living um I'm not saying I could do any better, but I also don't weld every single day. You know, that when I welded on my trailer, that was the first time I'd welded in, God, a couple years. I added the, uh, <clears throat> this was a 16-foot trailer, or maybe an 18-foot trailer, and I added the uh, dovetail on the back of this because the uh, car sat so low, um, I needed... I needed it to be longer that way. Man, I got some rotten boards on there I gotta replace. But I needed it to be a little bit longer, so I actually made these ramps up um, and put these hinges on here and everything as well. So this thing actually folds out and this whole piece from here down, I mean, it's probably 12 feet. And I needed that for 
uh, the clearance on my Mustang. But uh, yeah, so this is how the uh, ramps, <clears throat> this is how the ramps are held on there. But uh, another thing that I'm not crazy about is, uh, well, I'm a little nervous about the oil bath axles because I hear parts for them can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I have to keep an eye on those. Um, if I have to, I'll swap the axles from the other trailer. Um, these ramps, I'm not crazy about these ramps. Um, they're not like big Texas mega, um, mega ramps. So when I flip that up, these can slide back and forth, obviously, but I'm hoping I don't run into an issue where a shipper won't stack anything on top of these. Um, I wish they were wider. Um, I thought about maybe putting a metal plate. I don't know, figuring out something to where this will actually be, this will actually be flat here like it is with my mega ramps um, when I picked up the trailer I checked all the lights and this back left one here um, there's something wrong with the pigtail there's like a little brass piece that sticks out and plugs into the light that brass piece pulled out so I had to order a new pigtail for that um, they're 14 ply tires um, so that's that's a good thing they seem like they have a decent amount of tread left on them still. Um, what else do we have here? Does that have a grease fitting on it? It does not have a grease fitting on it. Um, there is no torque tube on this. But what it looks like they do is they run some beams across here. Um, and, it, and it helps. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, you see those beams? They run those beams across. Uh which helps on the flex a lot. Um, my other one flex a pretty good bit. This, this one flexes some, but not as much as the big techs. So, uh, but that's it. Um, this is the same trailer rocket ship has. Um, and he, when he picked his up, he had trouble with his wiring as well. Um, sometimes his lights would work, sometimes his brakes would work. And he had to do this deal with a wire as well, where we had to ground out one of the wires to the trailer so it would work. And this guy had the same exact issue. So these people actually must have, they must have an issue with their wire and they haven't got their wiring figured out um, with the ground issue. So, uh, but that's about it. Oh, another thing I don't, I'm not crazy about. I mean, look at the uh, look at the build quality on this toolbox. I mean, that looks like it just looks like a homeowner built this, you know. And again, I'm not saying I could do any better. I'm not saying mine would look better. But if you're building trailers for a living, um, not crazy about how this toolbox opens. Um, you can see the cuts. How he just how he just kind of cut this either with a torch or a plasma cutter. Just to set that in there, I mean these corners and everything just like, just look like crap, you know. Um, it does seem like the toolbox holds a little bit more than the other one, than the Big Tex version. Um, I mean, and look, look, I mean just, just look at the line on this, you know. I I, I don't know. I mean, it's a trailer. It's going to. Uh, it's going to work for what we need. Oh, and here's another thing. So this cap right here allows you access to inside here. But for some reason, he welded this cap to the frame. I thought maybe it was just caulking. But no, that's, that's metal weld. He welded that to the frame. Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it doesn't have the uh, pipe stakes either. You know how I like to take my chain and go around the pipe stakes? This doesn't have any pipe stakes. So, have to add those. Um, what else we got? Uh, the boards. So, when it comes time to replacing these boards, there's no other way to do it other than cutting these loose. Because all they did was slide these boards up underneath this this channel here and then they probably laid all the boards out and then they welded this on 
So when it comes time to change in this board, I don't, I don't know if he has a trick to it or what. When I go to pick up the, um, I'm going to go up there and pick up a new uh, GVWR uh, tag from him. I'm going to ask him what what his plan was to replace in these boards. It's little things like this that um, if you're going to make trailers for a living, you need to realize that there's going to come a time that you're going to have to do some repairs on this thing. And your average homeowner can't can't weld. I mean, I guess you could take it to a trailer shop and let them replace the boards. But then, I mean, how much is that going to cost you? 60 bucks an hour plus material? But uh, that's pretty much it, fellas um, and ladies. I don't know. You know, it's a trailer. It's going to get us uh, through. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what else to say. I'm going to I'm going to swap all my toolboxes over. Um, and uh, we'll go get this thing weighed. I hope it doesn't weigh too much. I hope I can still do a decent amount of weight. Maybe it'll be lighter than my Big Tex. I, I have no idea. Probably not. It looks like this guy used uh, thicker metal. And the way that they build these is they set these channels on top of... Well, yeah, on top of the beam. So they run the beam through and set these on top. Whereas Big Tex, you know, we did the notch and we slid them through. So, I don't know, man. Just, Just the welding on this... Just the welding on this is, uh, it just doesn't say professional on it. You know, if, if, I mean, it's little things like this where, I don't know if you could tell this side's lower than this side. I mean, people are, people are paying ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 for these things and you can't take a couple of seconds and flush that up. So, I don't know, maybe he's gotten better. This is a 2018 model. So, I don't know. Who knows? But I'm really unhappy with these ramps. They're, uh... They're kind of a waste. I kind of wish it was just a straight deck. So, let me get to work on uh, swapping everything over so I can get this thing weighed today. Um, I've got a um, another YouTube subscriber load picks up in Albany, goes to Wisconsin. It'll be a partial. Um, so we're going to go pick that up uh, as soon as that's ready, maybe Monday-ish. And then uh, I'm waiting on my uh, snow chain for my tires because you got to have that in Colorado during the uh, winter months. So I ordered that and I ordered some uh, flashing lights for the wide loads. And uh, we'll see what happens. All right, guys, I'm in the process of moving the uh, toolboxes over. Um, so it's not going to work the way that I had it on the other one. The other one, it kind of, this toolbox here, if you guys remember, I got on a Facebook Marketplace and bought it because it was a little bit smaller than the one that I, I usually keep in the floor of my trailer where I keep my battery charger and straps and stuff for the uh, race car. But this is still too big. I was hoping I could fit it down in the hole here. But it's it's just not made the same. So this one gets filled up pretty pretty full to the top with the moving blankets and stuff. Um, hey puppies. Um, and I've always wished that the toolbox was a little bit bigger. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, put the bigger toolbox there. And just swap this one out. My boards are rotten anyway, so I need to replace those boards. So all I have to do is just recut this hole for that toolbox to sit down in there. And we'll just probably go with that bigger toolbox. And then uh, this toolbox here. Um, the trailer's made different than the uh, Big Tex. On the Big Tex, this, this piece of metal that goes across here is actually a tube. Since this is an angle, I basically had to cut a piece of wood like that to keep that toolbox from trying to from, from trying to fall in when it gets heavy. And then I just bolted it to that frame. 
So, uh, probably work on bolting that. Man, I was really hoping I could sink that toolbox down in there so that I wouldn't have all that wind drag. And that's another thing. Look at this. These plates they put on here um, were obviously for strength this way to that way. But uh, that's probably going to be a lot of wind hitting on this plate. Um, I got 14 miles to the gallon pulling this thing empty. Um, <clears throat> obviously it would change up in the mountains and everything. But I think I usually got about 13 on that one. I don't know why there would be a big difference. It's probably just maybe I had some headwind, some tailwind, who knows. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to bolt that thing up there somehow and then uh, load the blankets back up. Um, it came with all of these straps here. I don't know if I'm going to trust using these things right now. I, I don't. I've got new straps. I mean, they, the, the straps I'm sure are fine. These are a little rusty. I mean, I guess they open and close fine. Um, this trailer will not be able to accept the rail. The ratcheting rail we put on. Because on Big Techs, this is a C-channel. On this, it's just an angle. So in order for me to do it on this one, I would have to run it down along and onto this. But then you have these that they put every once in a while. So I would have to cut a piece, stop it cut a piece stop it and i just don't know that that would be worth it with this to be honest um yeah i, I just don't know so we'll probably be hand ratcheting it for a while who knows i don't know what i'm gonna do honestly even even before this whole trailer incident happened i've been th i've been wanting to get out of this it's just not worth the time away from the family and having to deal with these brokers and to deal with the other drivers that are taking these loads dirt cheap. Um, I've been super, super lucky. I'm not going to lie. I, I've been really fortunate to be as lucky as I have with the loads that I get. But I don't know how far that luck's going to run. I am hooked up with some brokers that uh, have uh, some really good, decent paying loads. But it's getting in and out of the house that's that's the big problem. But let me let me see about bolting this thing down and uh we're gonna move everything over. I'd like to go get this thing weighed today, see what we can deal, see what we can do with the weight we'll have, and then uh, we'll know what we can do from there. Alright guys, so we got uh, both uh toolboxes mounted now. I've got uh this trailer came with a bunch of straps bunch of car straps two of them were uh, ripped so I threw those away but I kept the little metal rings what do we do with the metal rings um, right here I don't know what I'll use them for but we have them now maybe I'll get my nose pierced put one of those through my nose but uh so we've got uh, 17 hand ratchet straps now there's 17 in this box, and he had a few down there in that box. These are those uh, reusable zip ties I told you guys about a long time ago, where uh, all you have to do is hit that little button, and you can pull that zippy tie out. And you can just keep everything, you know, wrapped up real nice. And then I leave this spot open for my uh, my lock, my trailer lock that's on the, uh, the big text right over there. Um... So we're going to carry 17 of those straps in this box. I'm going to carry enough car straps to do two cars. Um, and then I'm going to put all my, the actual hand ratchets probably down there in that spot. I've got all my chains. I've got uh, six, six boxes of chains and I've got six um, ratchets and I've got one snap binder. Um, the snap binder is for when I build the bulkhead, the wooden bulkheads, because the ratchets, they, uh, they, they rub the 4x4, four four and it's kind of a pain in the butt. There's the uh, two car jacks for if I have to jack up the trailer or to support the back of the trailer so that it doesn't try to pick up the back of the truck. And then we'll fill that box up with the actual hand ratchets. And then this here, we have uh, 10 blankets over here. And then this is all my uh, wide load flags uh rubber 
Um, I use these for, these are the, the rubber things I, I cut up for when the springs went out on the other axles of the other trailer. I stacked these between the axle and the frame so that the tires wouldn't rub. But I've got these, so if I, I'm chaining down metal, I can put this between whatever and the chain so that the chain doesn't mess it up. Um, I've got to put those wide load banners in there still. Those are kind of, one of them's messed up. That's why I bought this one with the holes and the uh, stretchy stuff. That's that um, hand winch I bought, so if I have to pull some loads around. But uh, that's pretty much it. And then on the other trailer, I had a, a chain. That's that new strap or that new tarp I bought too. That other one, I had a chain going up under here that I kept all these corner protectors on. But you can see it's kind of a mess right now in the back of the truck. I need to get this situated. But I'm just trying to get everything in the truck that um, I would use so that we can get this thing weighed and we can kind of figure out what we're going to do here. I'm going to throw one more tire up here. Um... And that's, that's pretty much it. I need to put that aluminum ramp on. We'll go get this thing weighed. All right, guys. Today is uh, Sunday. Sunday something. Is it the 8th? December 8th? Um, so I was talking to Toe Piglet, and I was getting on the forums. Um, and they all suggest to uh, eliminate the oil bath because the seals either leak, which it doesn't make any sense. And look at these brake drums. These brake drums are humongous compared to the other trailer. But uh, they actually make uh, oil to grease conversion kits. And basically what will happen was I'll get a replacement cap for, for this that goes here. And then it just got a grease zerk on it with a cap, I think. Um, I don't know if I'll go that far with it. But uh, that's what we're doing now. Uh, just because we've got those wide loads coming up. And um, I don't want to be broke down on the side of the road. Uh, Toad Piglet mentioned that he did everything in the world to try to prevent his oil bath housings from uh, leaking. I mean, it looks like it'd be sweet to have, too, because you've got... This rubber cap and all you have to do is keep the oil filled up to the bottom of that cap and that's it but supposedly on these single tire axles that that seal flexes in the back somehow i don't know it looked like a pretty big heavy duty seal on the back of this thing so i don't know all i know is i'm tired of working when i come home and that's all i seem to be doing so it sucks but let me get uh i've got three more to do now and uh we'll see a bit see you See you in a bit. It's your fault. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, it is, uh, it's about 4.30. I started at about 2.30 and I've, uh, finished up. Just been cleaning up my mess now. Um, it didn't go too bad. So, uh, as you guys can see that this trailer weighs almost what the other one weighs. I think it might be maybe 100 pounds more. But I think I found out why this thing weighs so much. The uh, the drum brakes on an 8,000 pound axle, it's probably every bit of 100 pounds, really close to it. it it's, it's no joke. It's probably, man, it's so thick. It's m way more heavy duty than my 7K axles. Um, honestly, if I had, if I had time, I thought about swapping the 7k axles from the big techs onto this but i just don't have time um i might have to go pick up a load tomorrow in albany for a subscriber going to uh wisconsin um what i'll probably do is when it's ready go pick it up and then come back to the house and look for another load <sighs> um i was waiting on my snow chains but uh they came in today so all I have to do now is get a tag for the trailer. Um, and then I have the guy in uh, Alabama uh, making me a tag for this for uh, 16,000 pounds. And then uh, we're good to go. So what I'll probably do is pick that load up. I don't know if it's going to be ready tomorrow or Tuesday morning. We'll pick that up. And depending on what's going on here with the tag and everything, I should have the tag tomorrow. 
And then uh, as soon as I have that, I can leave out and go to Alabama, pick that up and be looking for something else going up to Wisconsin. And we'll take that up there and uh, probably start working our way over to Colorado. I still have to call the broker on that, make sure that that's all still going through. I don't want to drive to Colorado or find a load to Colorado unless I absolutely have to. But uh, that's pretty much it. You know, I was really hoping that those oil bath axles would be cool. But um, I don't know, according to Toe Piglet, they just, they're not, they're not reliable enough to do hot shot with the single uh, tandem, single tire axles. So, well, let me finish up, uh, clean up my mess. My uh, soldering gun went bad, so I can't solder this new pigtail on. Lita went to uh, Walmart to pick up some dog food. She's going to pick up um, pick up a new soldering iron there. And then uh, when she gets back, I can finish that up. And then we'll just double check all the lights and make sure everything's good to go. And um, this thing should be ready to make some money. Yeah, even when I'm happy, you are by my side. And when I close my eyes, you just start